Okay, I'll share my screen because we don't need to, uh, to wait. So this is the, the chapter. Uh, these are the notes I've made uh, last time. Uh, and this is the, the chapter. As I said, uh, the maturity reduction is very important, uh, and uh, especially when you deal with uh, a large amount of data, so lots of predictors. Uh, but uh, uh, even if you if you want to uh, do a selection of your uh, predictors of your variables and you want to understand which ones are the best uh, uh, driver for your response. So let, let's uh, go through uh, the things. So basically, when you, you create, prep, and bake uh, uh, recipe, uh, recipes uh, outside a workflow, uh, this is a way for you to understand a bit what, about what, what is happening after you have made a model. No? Then you you might need to compare, contrast dimensionality reductions, techniques, uh, uh, because at least at the end you can use them all uh, somehow. Okay, just, uh, excuse me, scusa, ti può abbassare un pochino? Alessia, abbassi dopo poco? No, okay. That's okay. Uh, quindi, uh, praticamente, when, uh, <laughs> so um, basically, when we do principal component, there, there's two techniques that are different, uh, and they uh, you decide which one to use following your design, uh, your research design. Uh, you you want to analyze some some data and you see uh, that you have uh, uh, a response variable that you are investigating. So then you decide to use uh, uh, one technique more than another. But at the same time, you might want to analyze the, your data uh, without considering a response variable. So we are talking about supervised analysis and unsupervised analysis. So supervised analysis is that, that analysis that has a response so in some sense, it is uh, supervised uh, your uh, predictors are uh, in some sense supervised by the response variable. So you are searching their relationship to understand what the response variable, so your, the, the variables that you are investigating will be in case they changes. Unsupervised analysis is a matrix of numbers. So you can imagine you treat all your variables as a predictor and you uh, are analyzing these numbers, how they are correlated within them. So you basically go into uh, variance, uh, um, uh, correlations, uh, and all the things that uh, connect with the within each other. So basically, uh, you use principal component analysis to reduce dimensionality, uh, and this would be unsupervised um, analysis. And you use partial least squares to, as well to reduce dimensionality, uh, and this would be supervi supervised analysis. And then you have two more interesting uh, techniques to use, which are the independent component analysis and the uniform manifold appro approximation and projection. Uh, and then we we'll go through these two because they are not quite uh, used quite frequently as well as the other two. So that would be interesting to see what, what differ difference uh, is between them. So, and then we see an example to how to use dimensionality reduction techniques uh, against the model. Okay, so basically here, uh, what I've done the, in the previous course was to uh, basically uh, to, 
um, revisit a bit what we done before. That was because uh, um, that was my first time going to tidy modeling uh, book. Uh, so I needed to, I jumped it in uh, inside a book club already started. So I wanted just to uh, revisit a bit the things. And uh, we, we might not need it at this point, but uh, you know that when we make a model and we use uh, uh, the recipe, then we prep and bake to see what are the results of our uh, of our recipe. We still haven't uh, done any modeling, uh, but uh, we, we can see with bake what is the result of the pre-processing. Uh, so the, what, what is the result of the application of our uh, recipe. Okay, so let's go forward. Yeah, a bit too much, maybe. Okay, so PCA, which is unsupervised methods, finds up to N new features. So basically to explain the variation of your data. So you, you have a matrix of data. This is the case which is unsupervised. So you, you do not have, uh, uh, you are not searching relationships against uh, an outcome, okay? You are just analyze a matrix of, of numbers. So what uh, PCA does is to break your matrix of data in subgroups, okay? So you have subgroups uh, and what actually does is subgrouping following the highest uh, level of variation of your data. So this is a nice um, um, graph and um, is made with this function, plot validation result, which is uh, uh, it's a function that is made uh, by the others. So you can even build it up your own uh make slightly modification and everything uh if you if you're interested we can go to the function otherwise we just uh we just see that we can apply uh pca once we are we made um, a receipt a recipe sorry i always make confusion between the recipe and rest a receipt but anyway so once we have pre-processed our our data we use uh, again a step function. So we use step PCA. And uh, you can do PCA uh, in general when you make mod, when you do modeling. You might have some variables that you want to investigate uh, more than others. So you might want to select the variables that you want to uh, test against the principal component. Or in this case, uh, you can do it to all predictors. Okay, then you select the number of components that you want. Uh, usually, uh, when when you uh, look at the result of the, of the application of PCA, what what you do is uh, plotting uh, the first principal component against the second principal component. So you don't need many. Uh, you uh, that would be enough uh, somehow under um, um, so it's quite frequently it's quite frequent that you just need a, a certain number of components, like four would be enough. Um, to give you an idea of how the, your 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 data group uh, within each other. Okay, so you can use step TC8 with tidy models uh, in a reci recipe with all predictors and setting the number of components. Uh, then uh, this is the plot validation result, uh, uh, which is, as I said, uh, the function to make this nice plot. 
And the result of the plot says that uh, these are the densities, okay, that you see in, in the diagonal. And uh, the first uh, component, the first principal component uh, against uh, versus um, the second component is this one here, while the second component uh, would be this other one, okay? As you can see, they slightly differ, okay? Because one is against the other, but then if we go, so they are the same, but they flip it, you know? If we go forward, uh, we see that they are not that uh, very well grouped. So it's a bit like uh, confusing within each other. So in this case, for this data, okay, uh, if we have this kind of result, we can decide that the first two components would be enough for us to understand how they group. What, what, what PCA does is uh, uh, selecting the variance, selecting the variables within uh, the variance level. So you decide for the highest level of variance within variables and you group them together. And then when you switch to the, sec the other component, you take the remaining variables with the uh, lower variance and then you group them together and then you go forward. Um, and the, this is the reason because uh, the, when the components with a, so like more than, with an higher number are more uh, not, not, not very well divided, okay? Because they have a lower variance. And we can even have a look at the, here, the, the density. Uh, and we can see that there is some uh, similarities in the trends for some predictors more than, than others. And then we can like make some conclusion, discussion, et cetera. But um, I'm, not, I'm not going to which, which kind of data are those ones, but I'm, I'm just uh, like to have a, an overview of these uh, techniques first, and then we do an example. While um, if instead of just, uh, um, uh, analyzing the predictors uh, without thinking about a response, uh, we can use uh, uh, PLS, partial least square, if we want to check our matrix against uh, uh, um, an outcome. So this is a supervised PCA. So partial least square is su a supervised principal component analysis. And uh, the, the main uh, um, difference in tidy models uh, syntax is this bit here. So as well, you, you put PLS instead of PCA, but then you have an outcome to set. So you set the outcome, uh, which is class, okay? Here is again uh, the function to make the plot. What is the difference between this result and the previous one? As you can see, they're quite similar. If I go back here. It's nearly the same, right? Yeah. This is principal components. And this is uh, uh, partial display. So they're quite similar. And as well, if I um, go forward with um, components, uh, they are not that well uh, grouped as, I, uh, as the other ones. Okay, so then we have independent components analysis. This is, um, uh, is um, independent. Uh, that means Ooh. they go fall. They go very, very fast. Okay. So it's independent. And that means that the variables are not correlated. 
so this is um, again a step function with ICA. I don't uh, I don't need to specify the response variable or anything else. The only thing I do is um, um, I think that they are not uh, they are independent, uh, not normally distributed. So that means that this non Gaussianity um, um, statement uh, basically means um, that they are not. Uh, um, I I suppose it can be thought as maximizing the non Gaussianity of the IC, uh, ICA component. So basically, there is a part of the, those those variables that are not uh, um, um, uh, behaving normally within each other. So I want to, what um, the comp this in independent component analysis does is in independently within the nature of each predictor uh, is pulling out uh, uh, they no, they non Gaussianity, leaving just the the. Uh, it, it's like applying uh, the central limit theorem. So they uh, basically replicate more uh, um, they they trend in a way uh, that can be. Uh, normally distributed okay so is the is the hope to find something like ic3 where you almost have like a bimodal split y you know because that's non non-gaussian right the first one is what skewed i always get this mixed up i think it's skewed right and then ic2 is skewed left and then ic3 is bimodal and then ic4 kind of looks semi-normal is the hope to get ice something like ic3 so you can kind of split it down the middle and get different different groupings yeah that that that's the only the only uh component that uh, gives us an, an idea of they group how they grouping the yeah number three def definitely yes i've used pca and pls Quite often, I've never even heard of this one. Yeah, this is, uh, you can use this when they are not, um, they are, when there is no multicollinearity, so they're not uh, correlated to each other. Okay, uh, I'll show you, that, then, then we, that, that, there's an example. So you can Let's use see. it when they are collinear or you use it when they aren't collinear? Which, I don't which... think it really explained. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I got to say, I wasn't fully grasping the maximizing the non Gaussianity. <laughs> I think I need to do a little more reading on that. Yeah. The, okay. So the, these two things that just uh, I've taken it from uh, here, maybe that, that would be more. Yeah. Uh, it's in the, yeah, it's in the text of the chapter for sure. Yeah. Uh, Uh, sixteen point five. The bottom, yeah, sixty-five, yeah, is where. Okay, so, uh, okay, what he said says that it, it is uh, slightly different from PCA, and uh, it finds components that are it finds components that are statistically independent from one another as much as possible, as opposed to be uncorrelated yeah so pca finds the 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 orthologous axis. orthogonal yeah the orthogonal yeah. views okay the, um, the, uh, and this one yeah. doesn't yeah. emphasize that it emphasizes statistical independence okay okay 
Because I, uh, I, I suppose the PCA axes could be like co statistically correlated with each other or anti-correlated in some way. Okay. So when you talk about uh, uh, the orthogonality, okay, that what, what, what do you mean when you talk about orthogonality? When you... Um, no, You're just the PTA is this. like you have the PTA, axis and yeah. then you have the, the opposite axis. And then, and then you have the other axis. Okay. The that, that's, that... um, that's PTA, right? It's uh, Yeah, it's, they don't influence each other at all. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then be, be... you get to the fourth dimension and who knows what that looks like. Yeah, then your brain breaks. Mm -hmm. okay. Mine usually that, does. Yeah, that, 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 that's what... Um, let, let, let's be a little bit more clear. So let's go a bit more in, in, inside this thing. Okay, so what, what, what this means. So, um, when, when are variables not correlated? Okay, when they are not correlated, for example. Let, let, let's start from, from this, this point and say, I have two predictors, I have age and sex, okay? So they are uncorrelated, okay? Under what condition and how, what means that age and sex is not correlated? If you have, uh, if you analyze them against, uh, some something so they may be correlated they may be not correlated it depends uh, by something okay so if i if i say i don't know um a particular illness it the illness um would increase or decrease if I use a, spe a special drug or, or, or a certain drug for a, a length of time that would be uh, uh, greater or lower. Oh, anyway, so in that, that case, uh, if you have a certain age and you have a certain uh, of gender, that would be influencing uh the, the the response and you you when you investigate in these things you you go and say is is sex and uh, age within each other correlated and then uh, with themselves themselves uh, correlated to this this uh this illness Okay, what, 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 what do you mean to be, maybe, I don't know, that, that's my, my way to, to say the things because I'm, I'm quite limited in vocabularies, maybe that, that. but there would be, I'm, I would be forced to say just the, the few things. What, so you, you can check the correlation with a function, you know, you do, you do core, put inside the variables, it releases a number. If the number is lower than one, uh, it's, the result will be uh, with between zero and one, and you decide if it's close to zero, it's not colorated. If it's close to one, it's colorated, okay? So what is correlation in, in, this, uh, in this, between variables? When, when you check the correlation between two variables, what do you do? You, you, you do the main of the variables, then you do the standard deviation within the variables, then you do the um, a matrix. So you, you multiply, basically, the main of the variables they, uh, and, and divide them by the, the standard deviations. Somehow, okay, we can go through the, the, the things. But to have an idea of what's happening is that you are searching if they uh, list of numbers within each other uh, and their frequency, it's linked to each other. So like I have sex is zero and one. Okay, if it repeats many times, um, 
with a certain uh, specific age, that will be correlated. If it doesn't repeat that frequency with a certain age, it's not correlated. Okay, so then I do the mean and this age is correlated with sex for the, for the numbers that I've provided with. Okay, so now here we are uh, searching for elements that are statistically independent. What means independence? Independence within variables. What is independence of the variables? Means that I can uh, show up. I, I am one of the predictors of your uh, data set. Okay, I can show up. If another doesn't show up, I show up uh, anyway. So basically I am independent. I, I do not depend from, from, from another predictor. So in my example, my age uh, can be independent from, from gender, from sex. If uh, um, anything happens, the illness will show up even if uh i'm male or female it just depends by the age so the age doesn't depend by the the, the gender so they they are independent so this is not correlation but underneath the, there is um an underneath thought that that would be in some senses correlated because they depend by the frequency they appear in your data set. I don't know. Okay, a bit clear or not. No. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I think I get it. Um no. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I I think I get it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's I don't know if back. anybody else disagrees, but I, I, I think I understand. I'm the only face you can see, so you're queuing on me. I, I don't think. I don't know because <laughs> Yeah, I see. I see. <laughs> But anyway, because um, we use techniques just as, as we ask to do, no? you know, you, you know that for doing that things you need that to use that and the other, the other one, like it's like when you, you make a cake, you know, you, you have that, that, those ingredients, you use that because this is what is required, you, you don't care uh, if what are you Basically, you know that that works, and you and you use that one. But um, so in this in this case is uh, that we are not um, uh, maybe I said it incorrectly. Uh, so what uh, uh, independent component analysis is is that it, it can be applied when the component, sorry, when the predictors are independent. So they do not depend from each other. They are independent. They are statistically independent. Okay. So that means that if one verifies, the other one doesn't change at all. So it doesn't change anything if we, I suppose that are being uncorrelated, but that's, that doesn't mean that they cannot be correlated or they cannot be uncorrelated. Okay, so, uh, so you use them when they are independent. So you have a list of predictors, they are independent, you can use independent component analysis. Okay. And you want to see how this they they group within each other. Obviously, all these things depends by what are you analyzing, what kind of data you got. You might do not need it. You might need it. And then, uh, to it can be taught as of no, it can be taught off as maximizing the non gasuality of the ICA component. So non gassianity is the normality. Okay, 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 okay. The, the values will group around the mean and the rest it goes to be lower and diminishing 
Okay, so the, the majority of, of your data is grouped around the mean. And how do you check normality with the central limit theory? So you do replications, you make your data bigger, 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 and then you calculate the mean, calculate the mean to see uh, statistically, because you did it a certain number of times, if they group around the mean and the rest diminishing, uh, doing campanular shape. So you can say that that as a gasanti. So it can be thought of as maximizing the non gasanti So you want to see what it's different of, of aside the normality. You want to group them, not all together, but you want to divide them. So that, that, that's interesting because here the first, all, all of them are almost uh, uh, shaping, uh, have, have a, the same campanular shape. Okay, taller. But why in this case, this uh, component four can uh, let you see which ones are so that they a bit divided within each other so you can see a bit of difference in density in the density what is it what what's the what what's the density it's the probability distribution what is the probability distribution Oh, you're asking us. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, I don't know, I just see history. It's the expected, <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the yeah. expected value, Probably histogram on steroids. Yeah, yeah, it's a super histogram. A nice color. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's the expected value, the expected value, which is the mean, the average. So what you expect from that variable is it's it's the average, no? And then if you do replication of this out of this variable many times, many times, many times. And the, the the average value all for all the times that you have replicated that variable with different frequencies, mm -hmm. you you can see that they behave in a certain way. So this uh, shapes this shape takes shape because they mean it's. Um, slightly lower than the global mean right because the zero is the the mean of everything and then the pink distribution is lower than that mm. and the See, cyan yes. one mm. is above if they are all together because zero is everything right right okay. yeah they've been they've been scaled so yeah, you'd, yeah. Ex you'd expect them yeah. to be around zero and then yeah <laughs> some of them vary yeah and then yeah. they mostly are yeah and they mostly are between two and negative two as as you would expect two and negative two uh yeah standard deviations, deviations. Yeah. yeah okay yeah because you can see the there's a weird skew on the first one where it goes mm -hmm. way out to the left but yeah, yeah. otherwise the two middle ones are, to all combined, are very kind of Gaussian-like. Yeah, they're pretty. They maybe a little sharp, well but yeah. otherwise. And then four is interesting because multimodal. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the most yeah. clear, cleared separation is with right. uh, number yeah. four. Number four. While my notes were number three uh, in the notes. Number three. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why. I guess the seed is different. They picked something different. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the last one is UMAP. I never heard of that. UMAP. One. Yeah, I've played with that one a little bit. It certainly gives pretty pictures, but it's fiddly. As they talk about, you have to tune tune the parameters. But you can with tidy models. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even here is a supervised. So mm -hmm. you specify the, and then you tune them. Uh, let, we, we can even uh, see. I feel like they should have talked about PCA and then ICA, because those are both unsupervised, yeah. and then talked about PLS and UMAP because those are supervised. <laughs> Mixing mm -hmm. it up like this is a little strange to me, but I've never used this before. It looks kind of interesting. It seems to definitely group things a lot more strictly. Yeah, it gives you better sense of uh, clusters than some of the other methods do, I find. But again, it's, it's kind of a result of what parameters you choose. And and like the random seed that you pick as well, probably. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh no, what's up with this? Did anybody else have a lot of fun having to like install lots of things to get this to? <laughs> that was me last chapter. I, I, I had that to... was my experience this chapter because like a lot of a lot of things were like, well, I need this package, okay. Oh, this package is not on CRAN. Go to here. Okay. Oh, it's not on. They had stuff that wasn't on CRAN. Okay. Yeah, learn oh. tiny models. There's a little note at the end of the chapter, though, but I didn't notice that until I figured it out myself. So, yeah, I don't know. But it probably should have just put it in line. But <laughs> you need these things. The embed Might package? Send them a little. Okay. Oh yeah, it's bioconductor package. Can, can you see? Oh, uh, yeah. I cannot use uh -oh, it. Now we're into it. Because I have uh, a problem with uh, Kiras. Oh, you misspelled we that, Federica. Keras, K E R A S. Oh, no there is there. a there is a Kiras package. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just older, I guess. Yeah. Because I'm, I didn't uh, uninstall it, the data, because um, yeah. I was but, trying to do, yeah. Federica, you might look yeah. into upgrading to ver version four as well. You might find you have better results with that, because I see it saying 363. Which one? What, oh, uh, just, just your version of, just your version of R. You, yeah, maybe look at getting version four. I cannot uh, do it. No, I cannot do it because, because I've, got, I've got Mac, uh, which is a oh, yeah. chapter. Yeah, so this one here, I cannot do it. Oh. I mean, you should be able to do most things with with three. I just I just find yeah. that the the more up to date I have things, the less the less headaches I tend to have. So yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, but uh, I'm sure it's a silly thing. Yeah. Uh, but I, I have the Dutch, uh, I needed to detach Kiras because I'm doing uh, ISLR and oh. uh, with uh, deep learning. So I oh, was trying okay. to, to use, yes, yeah, Torch and then Kiras and everything. But uh, apparently I've got the problem with the Belgian problem within packages. Mm. But anyway, uh, let's see now it does. Okay. Uh, it works. No, I missed the thing because I didn't uh, run anything. So I did that just to go through the function meaning. Okay. Oops, we see what this uh, uh, UMAP is. It's a supervised both and unsupervised analysis. So basically creates a specification of a uh, receipt. Yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> gonna, um, and uh, that will be will uh, project project a set of features into a smaller uh, space. So basically, 
uh, it's a non-linear dimension uh, reduction techniques that finds local, low dimensional representation of the data. Uh, and this is what all the other uh, techniques uh, do as well. So, uh, where is it? Okay, we can see here the difference. Uh, basically uh, uses a distance-based nearest neighbor to find local areas. So a difference of uh, PCA, for example, the keyboard scanning with for, for the variance, for the level of the variance of the variables. Here, uh, searching for the distance within variables. It's not uh, that clear to me um what how they group uh, i don't know if you have any maybe steven if you use it i don't know what how, um, how yeah i i um am not you know i don't have like a deep understanding of it but yeah it sounds like what from what they say instead of you know, mapping it directly to new dimensions, it just tries to get a sense of which things are, are close to each other and then just preserve that relationship. So, yeah, so so depending on your distance metric, you like for you map, you might have that little glob over on the left. Uh, that means, yeah, that if, if you look at the distances between those, they're, you know, relatively close together. So it's just a way to try to capture um, the fact that things are close together without, you know, going all the way to just projecting them into a new set of dimensions like um, PCA is doing, or I guess ICA, so. So basically they, they are, are far, uh, far to, to each other compared to the other techniques. So you can see It makes them, me think uh, of like when I studied topology and you had the weird concept that, you know, a, a donut is equal to a coffee cup, that kind of thing. <laughs> so it's more it's, it's, it's more just the nature of how things are, are connected to each other than, yeah, the, the like a three-dimensional picture. You see, if I, the, the others were uh, a bit more clear uh, when, when you look at the densities uh, and you look at the groups. Now you have right. these uh, outliers, sort of outliers, because they are mm. outside of uh, each group. No, they, they are singularities, they are around here. So you don't know uh, if this belongs to this one or the other. You may want to check the, the, the color, but they do not group with their group. Right. So, yeah, and you see there's nice separation see. in the density plot too, where it just kind of, you have like, like all the peaks are kind of separated out most of them mm -hmm. almost looks too good to be true to me well that okay so that's kind of been my experience right <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. almost like almost like it's you know overfitting or something you know? you're like whoa i got good clusters for a change <laughs> let me verify that this is actually a real thing yeah so it's it's, it's one of those things it's a, it's a nice tool but yeah you have to use it with uh, care okay 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 uh so then, okay, I did it too much. Modeling. So this is, uh, these are the notes, okay. So now, uh, what time is it? It was slow. I did that last night. I don't know. 17 if after the hour. <laughs> whatever whatever so that, hour you're in. Yeah, whichever your hour is. Here is for, uh, uh, like 4, 18, 4 p.m. 18 like uh, nearly for uh, for 30 so like 10 minutes left so mm -hmm. this is um uh, a bit slow exactly but um this is the result what you can see from the result is that uh, this is the rank and this is the the area under the curve, you can see that this one here, 
the list, the highest is with principal components. So we have basic, the dot, principal components, the triangle, and you map a square. So you have these three. Um, different things, different things. So the, the screen, the generalized, principal components is the first one. Uh, Why the screen regularized basic is the last one. So what's happened here? Uh, so we made a um, workflow setting. That means that uh, <laughs> uh, that we are uh, mixing up. Uh, so we are using more. Uh, we are using uh, three uh, recipes. Oh, yeah. Okay. We have a list of preprocessing things. And we I, have a list of models. Yeah. I, I had kind of a quick question. So when they do the recipes, they have basic is class and then squiggly uh, uh, dot. But I feel like they <coughs> define some uh, recipe up above. So I was wondering why they didn't use that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think, I think I, basic, basic is just not doing anything, maybe. Is I, no. It's just saying feed it directly, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. it, it works. I just, I just wondered why they chose to do that instead of using the, yeah, the, the just basic. to compare them. I, I, be, I guess that okay. just that they need to compare them and see the results. Mm -hmm. These are the two uh, recipes that we seen uh, previously. And there is just a step PCA or step. Uh, where is it? This is just a step. Right, yeah, the, the um, yeah. A step function for, and then it's the basic, it's the basic class, the, the step function. So basically you have a basic and then uh, partially square CLS step, recipe. CLS, then the yeah. UMAP, yeah. and then, UMAP yeah. Recipe. yeah. But then they use different models. So did they did they define those above, right? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, I see. Yeah. Bag tree R part classification. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We we can. Uh, um... I scrolled past it. That's my own fault. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there, there was a discussion about even about this one here. That was a best one. <laughs> yeah, that was a best one. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, let let's go back here. We map and then so this is the model specification. Model specification, packing uh, mm -hmm. specification, FDA specification, and everything bias. What they uh, did it here is uh, MLP, and then uh, this is the neural net uh, neural network. So. They said all those things. So different, different models uh, and uh, different uh, pre-processing uh, recipes. All together. So you might want to understand which one, why this. And that that's basically just to understand what is the result of the application within together to see which one is best of the other, and uh, to show you that you can use them all together. Putting inside a workflow set, uh, then you, you might have a, a discriminant. <laughs> so, analysis deciding which one is the best for you. Or, 
So you do a workflow set with a list of uh, uh, recipes, a list of um, uh, model engines, and then uh, uh, the workflow map. It's just as the same map as the map function. Yeah, compute it. Yeah. So then you set the metric that you want and ranking. Then rank the results. Um, and you see that they are uh, slightly different from, from that one there. So the first one here is basic MLP, and which is this one, the model. Interesting that the RDA, uh, scroll down, please. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the basic RDA is horrible, and then, but the PLS was uh, one of the best. So yeah, I guess that gives you a good indication that it can help. Indication what? Sorry, Stephen? Oh, go back to the thing that shows them all plotted, the, who, who did the best, the ranking. Basic MLP is, is what I see. Yeah, so, so if you go, if you look over, so... Um, like the second one is the PLS RDA, but then you, you go way over to the right, and then the worst one is the basic RDA. So yeah, it does mm -hmm. indicate that it, it certainly helped <laughs> to do PLS for the for the RDA. So it might help for some more than others, I guess. It's kind of interesting. So then what they do is to extract the workflow with the, uh, the best one, then finalize. Yeah. So, so did they pick the PLS RDA as the best one because mm -hmm. it's a simpler model? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because the neural network is probably a bit overkill, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Uh, maybe because this is just basic and then uh, yeah. yeah i i feel like probably the if you if you were to include air bands probably those first four would be pretty much equivalent anyway you know although that's just a kind of a gut feeling thing <laughs> yeah i suppose you could iterate over it right and do different yeah you could probably do it several times and kind of yeah, get some and sense. the average yeah. or get the get the error from that yeah, if you want to run your computer so, all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, inside the bin, uh, rest, uh, rest, I've got everything. And then select right. what I think is the best with extracting the workflow. Yeah. And then finalize run again. Run it on your, your One test more. data, right? Mm -hmm. And do the last bit. Last fit. That's it, you're done. You did it, 99.5 or 0.995, sorry. Yeah, but that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's a good, Hot damn. good result. We, have, we have accurately assessed our beans. We know which bean is which now. <laughs> <laughs> we know beans about beans. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so this, this is uh, very nice and nice to the, the only thing is um, uh, you might want to use it uh, or not. So while you, what's, what's your experience? You use, you use it always uh, within a model or because I think I can check how they group with principal components, also one of those techniques for dimensional reduction, and then decide which one I want to use, and then apply my, a model which is different and maybe doesn't even use uh, any of those techniques. What do you think? Are you saying when would you use it? I said, um, I may want to, check uh, my predictors using this yeah. uh, tech, dimensional reduction techniques and then to the model without the technique once i've chosen the, uh, the predictors that i want i don't know mm -hmm. what do you think 
so run the model with and without the pre-processing is that what yeah. you're saying and yeah, then yeah, look you at the do that because that's apparently. that's what the pls uh or sorry yeah it was pls rda versus basic rda was right with mm -hmm. and without yeah. the pre-processing of the PLS yeah. model. Right, right. So, yeah. I, yeah, the difference between those was night and day. Um, and yeah. Stephen was pointing out. It's interesting um, to see. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But, so, you de <laughs> you check you it against the principal components, for example, and say, OK, I understand that the variables are um, behaving like this. So they group it this way. Uh, and then I run my model selecting this, my predictors just within these variables. They are the most, uh, I, I reduce the, 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 the dimension of my problem, no? Using these techniques. And then I do a simple model without the technique. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean that makes sense. You you try. Yeah, I mean it, it's if you have an idea, you would try it both ways, and then you get a better sense of which one is really better. Definitely. That's what these that's what these tools are trying to help us do, right? We can just try yeah. everything. Throw right. throw throw it at and stick. See what sticks to the wall. Yeah, and I think yeah, I think over time, uh, you know, you, you could probably do some reading or just develop intuition with extent where. Yeah. You know, you'll you'll yeah. you'll kind of have a sense that in this case, based on how these variables look, I should probably do this. You know, so like like even this diagram that we're seeing, right? They were saying, you know, when you have this weirdly skewed data, if you apply this transformation, it you know makes it more well behaved. I didn't know about that, so that was kind of a new a new interesting thing to discover. So it's essentially doing the uh, like when when it's been a while. It's like in, normalizing. In yes, in college yeah. statistics. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the things they taught you was to normalize your distribution through like yeah. logarithmic transformation or right. other such transformations, so that you got a well-behaving variable, and then you could use that, and you could back transform the data right. coming out of the model to get the uh, predictor or, or whatever right. looking, looking right. much prettier. Yeah. Right. That's something I forgot to say, to mention, which is very, very important. When you use PCA or you need to uh, normalize your data, because okay. it's required for, the day, for, for this technique to, for, mm -hmm. in the data to be normalized, so within, uh, to be similar within each other, so they can be compared. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Makes sense. That's cool. Okay, so this is done.